Okay, so today's mission is to make some nice finished aluminum versions of these cable clamps right here. These I used to mock up the uh, yaw damp servo. And there's also some on the uh, trim servo up at the top of the airplane. And so we're gonna go machine some of those out. So I got a piece of aluminum bar this morning. We're gonna hop on the airplane, fly over to Buddy's shop, use this meal real quick. And uh, we're gonna get going on those, so let's go. Steel old Rams S7, we're going to get fired up and head over to a little airport at Stroud, Oklahoma. So we got fuel, crack and throttle, pull the choke, clear. There she goes. who's got uh, lots of milling equipment and that kind of stuff. Um, so we'll uh, let you follow along on this flight, give you a little introduction to the RANS. East Oklahoma City, little private grass strip, one hangar, uh, just me and a couple buddies that share the hangar. So it's 2,400 foot strip, but the last about 800 feet of it, six to 800 feet of it's actually a pond down, so it's pretty narrow. You guys will see that as we climb out. Uh, it's a good enough strip you can use it every day, but it's just, just tight enough it keeps you on your toes when you're flying in and out of here all the time. So we're going to let her warm up and uh, then we'll get going. Alright, so we got 120 degree oil temp and uh, here we go. I'll talk you guys through kind of a short field takeoff in this thing. So we're going to hold the brakes. We're going to drop the brakes. Airspeed's alive. Tail's up. There's 30 flaps rotate and we're off the ground and maybe 80 to 100 feet. We've got about a eight mile an hour headwind today. So we're gonna keep uh, climbing on out of here. That Stroud is to the east, so we'll make an eastbound turn out here shortly. today, just me and about 10 gallons of gas, and uh, climb out at 65, we're doing right at 1,000 feet a minute. over midfield and our downwind come in. This is a, it's a little 3,000 foot paved runway. We'll land on the grass by the taxiway and save the bush wheels a little bit. And uh, yeah, we'll get after it. It's a nice rough one today. Lots of thermals. Crowd traffic, experimental 62551, crossing over uh, midfield, getting our left downwind for uh, runway 18. Stroud. Alright, there's one knot. 
launch flap speed is 65 on this airplane. There's two notches, or 55, last notch. And uh, we're gonna bring her in, and usually I fly short final at about 40 to 42 mile an hour. So there we are. Ugh, a little bit rough here. Not bad. And we're here. So we got all our uh, machine work done and leaving Stroud, we're going to head back over to uh, my hangar and finish up these pieces and I'll uh, talk you guys through what we've got for an autopilot on that airplane. So we're going to get lined up for a takeoff here. And uh, do a real quick run up, we already got oil temp, everything's running good, fuel on, flaps, good. Do a flight control check. We're all good there. Frog traffic, Cessna 54036, turning left, crosswind 17, Frog. And uh, we're going to get out of here. Stroud traffic, Spearmill 62551, taking off on the grass, runway 18, going to be a uh, southwest departure. Stroud traffic. Traffic, Cessna 54036, turning to the left downwind, uh, Brock. 17, Brock. Uh, Stroud traffic, Spearmill 62551, departing pattern to the uh, southwest, Stroud. So we got all that worked out in the mail, we'll go back, we're gonna drill a couple holes in it, and uh, then we'll get them trimmed up, sanded down, and uh, ready to go in the airplane. Alright, we are uh, about 20 minutes later, going into uh, our little strip here in Hera, Oklahoma. And there's a big power plant right off the end of the airstrip actually, called uh, Horseshoe Lake. Um, I don't know, y'all Y'all might be able to see it over the nose, kind of right there. If you can see that, that's Horseshoe Lake. Um, and uh, so we're going to come in here, and there's a set of railroad tracks that are pretty handy for using as a base leg into the airstrip and uh, so yeah we'll talk you into it we'll do a been practicing for arc install so we'll do a steep approach in we got about 60 to 70 foot trees on the end um, a road and then power lines on the other side of the road so we've got real obstacles coming in um, so you pretty much flying into this strip all the time you just get used to flying real steep approaches I slip pretty hard about every time I come in so we're flying, I don't know, probably somewhere four to five degree glide slope is pretty normal coming into here, so it's it's fairly steep. Uh, but yeah, here we go. I don't know if you can see that on my camera or not, right over here, up in the sky, you might be able to see it. There's a B-1 bomber coming overhead. We're right on the edge of Tinker Air Force Base's uh, uh, airspace right here. So we get a lot of B-1 traffic, a lot of KC-135 traffic, uh, all that kind of stuff. So it's usually all above us, or supposed to be at least, but uh, you get fairly close to them on a regular basis. So tip this camera. So right off the nose, you can see this airstrip actually used to sit right on the edge of town, and uh, then town surrounded it. So 
It's actually right in the middle of town. There's neighborhoods on both sides, neighborhood off the end. And there's a lot of a lot of junk around it, so not ideal, but you know, it works. Slip, start coming down, see if we can get rid of some altitude. Pretty high, but we'll be all right. So we're gonna slip it on in over the top of these trees and these power lines. And we're gonna drop her in. We got plenty of airspeed. And we're floating for days, but we're here. And we're down to shut down. It's, I don't know, it's probably right about four or 500 feet um, from that uh, 70 foot obstacle. So it's not bad at all. But we'll uh, taxi up to the hangar here and we'll go inside and I'll uh, show you guys the autopilot set up on the Bearhawk. So we started with a piece of a uh, flat bar here, we zoomed in. Um, so we came in and laid two 16th inch um, little bevels down it and then cut them up into chunks and sanded them all down and drilled a couple holes and now we've got 16th inch bridle cable clamps. So we're gonna get those installed now. Okay, so now that we're here back at the Bearhawk, let me show you the yaw damp servo, and then we'll go through roll and pitch, and then I've also got electric trim as well. We'll talk about that. So here on the front of the airplane, um, I came in and welded these two straps in while I was fabricating everything, and uh, it's worked out pretty well. I've got a cable that runs over the sides, down, and ties into the brake pedals right there. Same deal over here, comes over, down, and ties in. That basically just gives you a loop in the system so that your cable can run across the front and pick up the servo right here. So that's the yaw damp. And then over here, both my roll and pitch servos are underneath the pilot seat. So underneath the pilot, normally pilot seat is sitting right, sitting right here, right there's all my headset jacks and power and oxygen and stuff. And then right here's the pitch servo. So as you come back and forth, we're just tied right here into the bell crank setup for lack of a better term. Um, and then over here, we've got the roll servo. So the roll servo is bolted in with a piece of 60 thousandths aluminum. Uh, it's got several clamps into the, uh, into the structure and then we're tied into the um, actual sticks right there. And so we get full range of motion, full travel. Haven't had any issues with it. Um, we'll see how it goes once we start, uh, start working on it but, um, and start configuring everything in flight. But so far it's working good. Um, and so all my cables just come out of my, my electrical tracks that run down the belly. So they come out, come over, and then I've got all my intercom stuff, autopilot, autopilot. These are both my stick controls, so I can unplug those and take them out. And then this plug goes to my oxygen system um, that will be sitting right here. That's a little pulse demand oxygen system. So those two right there are the pitch and roll servos. We've got the yaw servo, and then I've got a Garmin GSA autopilot servo running the trim. And so up on the top of the airplane, I've got a little hole, um, and there's a GSA servo tucked in there. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like from the inside, but basically it's just another capstan kit that grabs, uh, and you can see it up there in the top of the airplane. Uh, just nestled in there and it just grabs onto the, the trim cable as it comes by. Um, I welded in a little bit extra structure uh, to give it something to bolt to, but other than that, it's a fairly easy install to do it that way. All right, so that's how we tied in all the servos. Here's the business end of the uh, autopilot up here, running a 507 autopilot control head, um, also integrated with the G3X screen. There'll be a big G3X screen here that's still on back order and then this screen is going to get moved over to that slot right there so uh, if we come to the 507 you can click on a level button 
and you'll hear the servos kick in, clutches engage. Right here is a disconnect on these grips. Like that, you hear the servos disconnect. Now we've got free controls again. And then you've got all that indicated on the G3X right here as to what's going on. So um, this is an electric uh, up for trim, down trim. And uh, you've also got a manual wheel up here that'll run when you run the servo in the back of the tail. So that's how we did the autopilot on this. We'll see how it works once we get it configured. Everything should work. Seems to be working on the ground just fine. So we'll get it all adjusted during phase one and uh, enjoy an awesome autopilot. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll see you in the next one.